Good evening, church. I'm grateful that you are joining me in this way, and I want to uh, welcome you. Hopefully you found your way here, and um, this is a new format that I know we're using on YouTube. Uh, we are hopeful that it will provide uh, what we need in terms of uh, support to help make sure that the content that we're trying to produce is getting to you in the, be in the very best way. And so I appreciate your patience as we try to move from Facebook to YouTube. Um, it's going to function in a really similar way, and we wanted to, to kind of practice tonight so that Sunday won't be uh, the first time for all of us. So, so you'll notice that that's over on the, the right side of your screen, there's a chat feature, and you can comment live. I have recorded this earlier, but, um, but you, I'm going to be on with you, and, and we, we can comment and share. The difference between Facebook Live and YouTube uh, is that on Facebook, you know, you can see if, if I'm watching the, the church Facebook Live, it'll say Doug Page is watching, um, but we can't know that you're here. We see the, the total up in the top corner up there of how many people are watching live, but we can't know you're here unless you comment that you're here. So be sure and say that you're here. Let us know. Uh, feel free to chime in with questions or comments or thoughts uh, as we go throughout this uh, midweek uh, time tonight. So. Um, I want to start tonight with, uh, similar to the way I did last week, we're going to spend some time in prayer, uh, and I'm going to, I want to just uh, read the prayer at the end of this. We'll just have about uh, 20 or 30 seconds of silence, and then I'll move into our devotional time together. So uh, let's pray as we start. Father God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel, God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, true and living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, have mercy and hear our prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it will be now, and be forever. O God, make speed to save us. O God, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, in word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Let's take about 30 seconds uh, of silence. I'm going to read the Lord's Prayer. I would invite you to read along with me if you have that. Um, I sent an email out with that attachment, but you can also look it up on your phone. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, I, I started uh, that way both this week and last week, and I think I'll do that for the foreseeable future. And I did that on purpose because I want us to, to be thinking about the fact that even though we're sheltering in place and I know many are still going to work, things are still happening like normal for most people, uh, except for the fact that a lot of that's happening at home or maybe in a more 
uh, constricted way. Um, and I know that I, these prayers that we've just prayed kind of help center me a little bit. Uh, instead of just jumping into uh, a conversation, a, a teaching that I might offer, <clears throat> these, these prayers help kind of center me and slow me down a little bit. And so I hope that they, they serve the same purpose for you. I love thinking about the fact that God is uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he is God for them, and that he is God for us, and that God has seen everything, and that God is in the midst of all of this and all of our life's situations, uh, and that God is not going anywhere, and that God has been here uh, for all time, and that he will continue to be here until time stops. And that's a, I take comfort in that. And so we know that God is the God that can save us and that can help us, uh, and that we have a role in that. And we're going to actually talk about that role tonight. We're going to be in John chapter 13. I would invite you to find a Bible or look on your phone or, or maybe some other way so that you can follow along in John chapter th uh, 13. We're going to read uh, the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And I want to say before I read that this night was originally the night we planned on uh, having our Seder meal. Some of you will remember that and recall that. Uh, and that meal is a time to remember the, the, the meal that Jesus and Jews in general would have celebrated on as they recognized Passover uh, on the night. Um, tomorrow is traditionally the night that celebrated the, the night that Jesus would have remembered that meal, which would be the night before he died. And so I wanted to do something tonight that still kind of connected us to uh, that meal that we were planning to have. And so I hope that, that this, this study, this devotional will, uh, will help in that way. Um, and even though we can't do the, the Seder meal in the, in the way that we had planned, uh, we hope to do that at some point in the future. Um, and I wanted to spend some time reflecting on that meal tonight uh, as we prepare for Easter Sunday um, and so that our hearts will be ready. Uh, to celebrate the resurrection. So uh, as we prepare for Easter, my hope is that, that tonight will help us continue uh, in that preparation. So let's read from John chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. And John writes these words. It was just before the Passover festival. And Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal. He took out his outer, off his outer clothing and he wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said that not everyone was clean. So this is one of the more remarkable stories, I think, about Jesus. The Passover meal is being served, and Jesus gets up, and he starts washing the disciples' feet. Foot washing was a normal experience. I mean, it's something that we don't experience and it's not normal for us, but for them, it was a normal experience. The disciples were used to having their feet washed, though they were not used to Jesus being the one to do it. That's the thing that threw them off. So I want you to do a little bit of a thought experiment with me. And I want you to imagine someone in your mind that you believe and that you see as a really high authority figure somebody that you respect, uh, somebody that you view as a leader. Um, I want you to get that person in your mind, somebody that you, you believe to be an authority, somebody you respect, you view them as a leader, and I want you to get that person in your mind, okay? You have them. Now, I want you to imagine that person getting up and starting to wash the feet of the people at the table that you're sitting at. 
it would be hard. It's hard to imagine somebody that you, you know, you view, it might even have to be someone that you imagine doing that, that you don't really know, because I think sometimes, but I think, I think actually that the, the closer you know them, or the more deeply you know them, that in some ways it may be harder to imagine them doing that to you. Right. So I think this is what the disciples would have felt like. I mean, the way that you might imagine that happening with someone you picture in your mind is the way that the disciples would have felt as Jesus started his way around the table. And we give Peter a hard time. We're like, you know, Peter, didn't he understand what's actually happening? But I think the reality is we would react the same way. And if you've ever had your feet washed, you know, it is terribly, dis you know, uncomfortable. Um, and so Peter says, you shall never wash my feet. And I think it's the exact same way we would have responded. You will not, don't, take your hands off my feet, right? The task of foot washing uh, was considered so menial that according to some Jewish sources, slave, Jewish slaves, okay, Jews would have been the ones washing their feet. But because of the, the task was viewed as so lowly, Jews wouldn't have even allowed Jewish slaves to be the ones to wash their feet. The job would have often been refer, reserved for Gentiles to do. So it was seen as degrading. It was seen as lowly, uh, a lowly task for the person who was doing the foot washing. And so in fact, and in fact, there are, there are moments in John's gospel, chapter 12, verse 16 is one of those, chapter 2, verse 22 is another one of those, where Jesus tells, or where John tells us rather, that the disciples didn't fully understand what Jesus was doing for them until after the resurrection had taken place. So the event, whatever it was, took place. And then the other, you know, they didn't fully understand what was happening until after the resurrection, after Jesus had come back from the dead. And now John's writing his, his gospel, and he's sort of reflecting on all these things that Jesus did, but it's after Jesus had been raised from the dead. And I think this is one of those moments. But even as surprising as this would have been for the disciples, this is not the most surprising part of the story. It would have been shocking for them, and it would have been, you know, hard for them to comprehend. This is why Peter reacts the way that he does. But I don't think this is the most surprising part of this story. I think the most surprising part is the ending to this story and what happens next. Let me keep reading. In verse 12, John chapter 13, verse 12, John writes, When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place. So now Jesus is sitting at the table with the disciples. And then Jesus asks this question. Do you understand what I have done for you? It's like they're already kind of uncomfortable. They're already a little bit feeling a little bit awkward. They're not really sure why Jesus just did this to them and for them. And so, but Jesus isn't going to let it go. He's not going to let it die. He kind of presses the issue a little bit and he says, Do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I say to you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The biggest surprise of this story isn't so much that Jesus washed their feet, though they would have certainly been surprised. The surprise ending is that now Jesus says, now you do it. Have you ever, I don't know if you ever had someone show you how to do something, and then they step back from showing you, and then they say, now you do it. I remember doing this with my boys when they were, as they were younger, and the, the day came where it switched from me mowing the yard by myself to them doing it with me. And then now they do it by themselves. Right. And I still like to do that. So I'll help sometimes, but this is what discipleship looks like. I, Jesus says, I do you watch. And then Jesus says we do together, which is what his ministry years were. And then in this moment, Jesus says, now you do. This is the same thing that we do as we learn and teach new things, as we learn new things from other people or as we have learned them in the past and as we teach them to other people. I do, you watch, now we do together, 
That's the second move. And the third move is, now you do. This is why Jesus says, as I have done, so you do. Right? And the thing that I love is that this is not what they expected. They didn't expect Jesus to do it to them, and they definitely did not expect for him to tell them to do it. But that's what happened. And what Jesus was revealing to them and to us in this statement, as I have done, so you do, is that this is the way that things were going to go in the kingdom of God. He intended for his followers to behave like this, both in his presence and as he left in his absence. And this is what we expect of children, grandchildren, people who we disciple as I have done, so you do. Do it in my presence, and when I'm gone, you also still keep doing it. Service to others, living with a posture of humility, putting others before self, and, and, and other, other ways to maybe to, to describe that. But those are a few that I think of. Jesus says, service to others, as I have done, so you do. Living with a posture of humility, as I have done, so you do. Putting others before self as I have done, so you do. These, all these things would be, become trademarks of what it means to be a Christian. They, they would become our identity, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Service to others, putting others before self, and living with a posture of humility. And I think you could agree that these are things the world is in desperate need of right now. A couple of nights ago, Lana and I were at Walmart and we were doing uh, some grocery shopping. And you know, if you've been to Walmart or you've been out at all during this time, you know that people uh, feel a little bit testy. And so uh, a couple of nights ago when we were out at Walmart, there was a lady who passed me. And when she passed me, she was really close to me and was kind of, uh, seemed oblivious to the fact that there was not six feet of distance, right? I didn't say anything. I kind of let it go. Well, Walmart is getting ready to close, and Lana and I are heading to the checkout counter at the end of the night. And um, because I'm in a hurry and trying to rush to get out, I, I, I'm not paying attention. I, I step up. They, they, you know, if you've been to the grocery store recently, you know they've asked you to keep six feet of uh, space between the person that's checking out and you. Well, I'm, I'm in a hurry. And so I go up and start trying to set my, our groceries on the, you know, on the, the car, on the table there, whatever you call that. And um, the belt, thank you, the belt that uh, it's just, the word just came to me. And, um, and so I start, and, the, and the, the same girl who had passed me earlier in the, in, you know, back in the refrigerated section near the bacon says, uh-uh, that's not how this works. You need to back up six feet. And I didn't have one of my best moments, confessional moment here. I said to her, after, kind of, after stepping back, I said to her, well, that's not how it worked a little while ago when you passed me back at the back of the store. And I share that story partly as confession, partly to say that what I, as I've reflected on that interaction over the last couple of days, uh, I think what happened in that moment was that I forgot my true identity. I forgot what it meant to be, to carry these trademarks of being a follower of Jesus, service to others, living with a posture of humility, and putting others before self, right? And, and sometimes these kinds of moments reveal our heart that there's something, and I know that I struggle with needing to get the last word. Um, and in these moments, we know we could be right, and we can say things in the wrong way, which will still make us wrong most of the time. And I think this, these are the kind of things we teach our kids. We, we have been taught as adults that, you know, maybe we were taught by our parents or grandparents. But the reality is that our, our world is in desperate need of people to live right now in these moments with a posture of humility, with a, you know, as a carrier of grace, a willingness to serve others, a willingness to place other people before ourselves a willingness to not always feel like we got to get the last word. Jesus ends this teaching by saying, a new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, 
so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And my hope is tonight that we can take that word to heart. And so a question that I want to pose to you for reflection as we wrap up. What actions, what words, what attitudes of yours may not be in line with this teaching from Jesus? How can we live with humility, with a posture of humility, as a carrier of grace? How can we live with a willingness to serve others first and to put them first this week? This is a great week to do that because we're leading up to Easter Sunday when we know that the ultimate picture of what those things looked like took place as Jesus died on the cross and was in the tomb for three days. And on Sunday, he rose from the dead. Those are the ultimate pictures of what it means to serve others and to live with a posture of humility and to put us before himself. And so this week, may we embrace that same spirit as we live in to this week of Easter celebration. So I want to remind you that Friday, uh, Good Friday, I'm going to have a prayer time, and I'm going to do that on Facebook Live on Friday at noon. Friday at noon, join me on Facebook Live for a Good Friday prayer gathering. Uh, and we'll be there just for a brief time if you're able to join me, or you can catch that later if you miss it at noon uh, under our videos tab on our Facebook page. Uh, and, it, and also, as you think about Sunday, if you have any questions about YouTube or about getting on the church YouTube channel, uh, please reach out to me, reach out to Chris so that we can help you get set up for Sunday. We are hopeful that that will be a great experience for everyone. Once we post the link to the YouTube uh, channel on Facebook. Once we post the link, uh, on it'll be all, it'll be you'll be able to find it from our website. If you go to kaufmanchurch.org, you'll be able to find it on YouTube, and we'll also post the link on our church Facebook page on Sunday morning. So there'll be three different ways that you can access that, uh, and so you you can still you know share that on Facebook, and you can and it'll just point people toward our YouTube channel. So um, so just remember those things. So hope to see you on Friday. Thanks for being here tonight. It's been good to be with you. Uh, I love you and I miss you and I miss being with you so much. Let's close tonight with uh, a prayer as we wrap up. Father God, we pray that you will keep watch over those who work or watch or weep this night. You'll give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous and all for your love's sake. And the church said, Amen. I love you, KCOC. Talk to you soon. Grace and peace.